Ooh, hello everyone. I have here Vivo X60. It has a release officially in the global, uh, but it is available in China. It has a Exynos chipset. Surprisingly, Samsung still hasn't released any devices based on Exynos 1080 uh, so far. Uh, it seems that this chipset is for a different market, right? If you go to the specs of this chipset, then it looks kind of similar to the Snapdragon variant, but with a Mali graphic, right? Anyway, I will compare it with its siblings, younger brother Exynos 2100 and older brother Exynos 990. The results are quite surprising. So make sure to watch till the end. Okay, let's start with the Geekbench mark. Anyway, by the way, I really like Vivo X60 very much. It looks so beautiful. Maybe I will show you a short unboxing video. The unboxing was so, so beautiful. The charger, earbuds, and even case were included so beautifully. I don't have any words. <laughs> it makes buyers like me feel special. I really felt special myself. Anyway, <laughs> well, let's go back to the video. All these devices support a high refresh rate. They support adaptive motion smoothness. They all go up to 120 Hz refresh rate. All these devices are in similar settings and also have installed equal amounts of application. If you compare the CPU, then both Exynos 2100 and 1080 have upgraded CPU cores than Exynos 990. Both Exynos 2100 and 1080 have ARM based architecture cores that means a 341 layout similar to the Apple Bionic chipset, whereas Exynos 990 has a 242 layout. Of course, Exynos 2100 and 1080 are manufactured under 5nm, where Exynos 990 is based on 7nm. Alright, all devices have around 32 Celsius internal temperature. Uh, let's start the battle. Alright, by the way, Exynos 2100 has much better CPU cores and slightly overclocked than Exynos 1080. To be honest, theoretically, Exynos 2100 and Snapdragon 888 are almost similar, but the only differences are in the GPU size. Alright, here is the result. S21 is a winner in the single core and in the multi-core Exynos 1080 is the winner. Exynos 990 seems way behind, right? Exynos 990 seems way behind in terms of multi-core scores. Both Exynos 2100 and 1080 score neck to neck. If you calculate the average score for the both processors, then 2100 is the winner with a slightly number in Geekbench mark score. All right. Uh, so one thing we need to focus on here is machine learning. The machine learning is quite impressive in 2100 and 990. After this test, the CPU temperature is higher in Vivo phones than Samsung devices. Let's go to the second round. In this round, I will be doing a 3D Mark Wildlife Stress Test. And here is the result. Exynos 2100 score higher than others in the best loop. This stress test is about 20 minute heavy test, so performance drop a lot in different loops during the test. The lowest loop score is better in Vivo than others. It maintains 99% where Samsung devices seems different approach. I will tell you what I mean. But Exynos 990 nope. is really a worse <laughs> situation here. I feel so bad for my Note 20 Ultra. It would have been great if Samsung was able to upgrade at least some cores uh, in Exynos 990 for the Ultra model. Uh, because I paid a lot for this device. Let's not make hate and debate here. I want to make my channel more positive. <laughs> Let's see the result. By the way, Vivo seems to be much warmer than others. You can see not so much performance difference in the best and low loop uh, data in Vivo X60 since the performance drops a lot on Exynos 990 and 2100. Vivo consumes battery about 12% uh, where S21 consumes 10% and Note 20 Ultra consumes just 8%. Note 20 Ultra seem more cooler than the other two. FPS situation is better in S21, but overall stability Vivo seems a beast, right? It seems that the familiar chipset also reacts 
uh, nope. differently on different devices. So it seems that Vivo mostly focus on the high performance says and its chipset are more open to do high touch where Samsung implementation seems more balance oriented. All right. In the chart, you can see Vivo didn't care about the battery consumption and heat production for the high performance where in S21 performance drops in many places to control high energy consumption and heat production. In Exynos 990, the situation seems more worst. It is really inferior because this processor warms up so quickly and the performance says drops so randomly. It is worse for such a price, right? To find the situation again, uh, I did another round of this 3D mark while life stress test. Uh, I was doing other tasks while waiting for the results. Surprisingly, people just closed this app. Maybe because it was very, very warm or it seems that the device is extremely hot. I couldn't record because I turned off the camera at that time. Only S21 and S Note 20 Ultra were able to finish the tax. The performance dropped a lot, but at least they finished the tax, right? The lowest loop score of S21 is even higher than the <laughs> best loop of Exynos 990. As you can see, the devices were warmer before the test and in the second round, they consume uh, less battery and also performance drop. Anyway, Exynos 2100 has improved a lot thanks to Samsung. At least they gave us something good at this time. It seems that Vivo X60 just closed the tax once it reaches the peak temperature. Basically, it just kills the tax once it is very very warm. So it seems that the Samsung implement their processor quite differently. I really like this idea for being a device more balance oriented uh, but uh, for the power gaming this is really bad. Maybe uh, Samsung should slightly open up for the power performance. I don't know why they want to control the device perform power. Samsung if you are watching could you please let us have more peak performance than what we are getting now. It is possible as we can see in the Vivo phone they implement this Vivo phone for more peak performance oriented than balance oriented than balance performance oriented at least you can give 20 to 30 percent than now right thank you so much for the update i hope we'll get this update really really soon winky face <laughs> okay in this round also s21 is clearly winner uh, let's go for the last round in this round i'll be doing more natural kind of daily life uh, using test let's import and export the video we'll uh, we'll find out which device will execute this uh, tax faster uh, let's import the same file in filmora go in all devices uh, s21 is the clear winner for importing the file surprisingly exynos 990 is in the second position let's uh, export this file Wow, Exynos 990 is the winner. <laughs> the moral of the last round is that uh, you will not find which chipset is inferior in the normal daily life use, right? But if you remind the overall test result, Exynos 2100 is superior to any other Exynos chipset so far. According to the scores, the differences between Exynos 2100 and 1080 are not so much differences. Uh, I wish Samsung has given Note 20 Ultra with Exynos 1080, that would have made sense. But sorry for those who bought Note 20 Ultra at first market price, including myself. <laughs> I'm sorry for myself also. Few seconds of silence for us. If you feel sorry for us, then do not forget to subscribe and like. Recently, we are talking too much about CPU, uh, game problems, and Exynos things, right? The next video will be something different. Stay tuned, but it will be very interesting. See you all soon. Thanks for watching. Take care.